How close were you with Serene before the experiment? He'd been looking out for me ever since we were kids. When my parents passed away, Paul's family made sure I got back on my feet. You know, Will wasn't around much. I never did have a tendency to make things easy for myself. <laughs> Guess I dragged Paul into my mess. We spent a lot of time looking for trouble. We found it. He got out, I didn't. You said you owed him one. He saw the path I was on, where I'd end up if I stayed. He got me out of the country. Told me to never look back. Until now, I never did. Yeah, you know, we were close. Your brother was hired as head advisor on Project Promenade. Given William's concerns with the project, why do you think he accepted the position? He knew he had to get on the inside if he was going to put a stop to it. I've got a better question for you. Why did Monarch secretly push to get my brother hired if they knew he was a threat? You wanted him there. Why? That is simply untrue. Monarch invested heavily in the university experiment. It made sense to offer our own Cronin researcher, Dr. Kim, as the lead developer on the project. Kim's death was a tragedy for us all. But when he passed, we... Don't play games with me. <laughs> Excuse me? Look, you forget that I know things I didn't back then. I know what really happened to Dr. Kim. What exactly are you inferring? You want me to tell the truth? Then it goes both ways. You rescued Amy Ferrero at the Ground Zero operation. We know that she downloaded classified Monarch documents. Documents regarding our plans. The CFR, the lifeboat protocol. We believe you're in possession of these stolen files. Monarch framed me. Made the entire city believe I was a terrorist to cover up their tracks. I figured the world might want to know the truth. You never released the documents to the public. Well, depending on how this conversation goes, that could always change. <laughs> Don't make me grumpy. You said you'd been to William's workshop before. What brought you there? He sold our family home to finish building the countermeasure. He never told me. When I found out, I was furious. I hadn't talked to the guy for almost three years. He stopped answering the phone. I figured he was deep into drugs, gambling, something bad. Did you discover the truth? I never gave him the chance. I found him outside that workshop and tore right into him. Blamed him for everything that went wrong between us. I could see in his eyes he wanted to tell me, but I wouldn't let him. It was the last straw, you know? If I'd handled the situation a bit better... Let's move on to the next question. You gave yourself up at the party. Clearly your presence had an impact on Serene. He dropped everything to see you in that cell. Now why do you think that was? He wanted me to understand. Why he did what he did, what he was trying to do. He wanted to recruit you. Maybe he should have thought of that before killing my brother. Your behavior shifted during your mission to kidnap Dr. Amaral. You became less foolhardy, more calculated. What changed? I found hope. The second time machine? You actually thought you could go back and stop the fracture from ever occurring? Stop everything? There was a chance. That was enough. Yet every sign you've seen has proven otherwise. Your own brother posited that time works as a rigid closed loop. No interaction with the past could possibly change what has already occurred, and any attempt to do so would merely cause such events to occur in the exact manner they always did. Perhaps there was a lesson to be learned. My brother died trying to save this world. You know the last words that came out of his mouth? I'll never stop trying. Lesson learned. Let's talk about Serene's condition. You're aware of how it started? Uh-huh. Ground zero. Monarch developed a treatment to curb his symptoms. Our reports state that you destroyed those treatments, rendering him defenseless as his sickness spread. That's what the reports say, yeah. But I've never stepped foot in that lab. You have no way of proving that. Now, I find it curious. Dr. Amaral was working on a permanent cure for Paul's condition. But she was ordered to stop before research was complete. Sounds like somebody on the inside didn't want him to get better. Sounds like you have an interest in this cure. It makes me wonder if you know anybody else suffering from the same symptoms. It makes me wonder if that is why you're truly here. Or maybe I just really like the coffee here. 
Are you aware of the lifeboat protocol? Yes. The project was meant to assure our continued survival past the end of time. The lifeboat was built for 300 people. What about the other 7 billion... That Those 300 people were selectively chosen to take refuge in order to provide our best chance at developing a permanent solution to restoring the Joyce Field while protecting the human race against the threats that would arrive with the end of time. You stole the countermeasure, the CFR, the device necessary to run the lifeboat. You effectively sabotaged Monarch's survival plan. Knowing what you know now, do you stand by your decision? 300 isn't good enough. I want you to tell me if any of these names ring a bell. Fiona Miller. Nope. Charlie Wincott. No. Beth Wilder. You know the answer to that. I don't have time for this. These names are all connected. It's hard to believe you would be aware of one, but not the others. They're all traitors to Monarch, linked by- Traitors? But you say Monarch's mission is to save us from the dangers of the future? Now Beth devoted her entire life to that cause. The one thing that could stop the fracture? Her sacrifice is what kept it safe. Everything you built, everything, was based on that device. The device she fucking died to preserve, and she's the traitor? Your plan was flawed from the start, and you blame her because she found a better way. You owe everything to her. I thought you barely knew her. Next question. Let's talk about time travel. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. I want to go through every known event of time travel. Make sure we have the logic right, that we haven't missed anything. Okay. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Bartender says, we don't serve time travelers here. Time traveler walks into a bar. No? Nothing? Not even a smile? Okay. Thank you. This helps. That's a tough audience.